We've taped off a section here on the hood of the car, and we took a tape measure, and just for fun we measured this, and it's actually right about 20 inches square. And that's about as big of an area as you want to work on at one time when you're removing the swirls. Later on, when we go to put the wax on, you can actually work on a pretty good size area. But when you're removing swirls, you only want to tackle a small section at a time. The backing plate and the back of the foam pad use a hook and loop interface. So what you want to do next is put your foam pad onto the backing plate. And you want to try to center that up and get it as true as possible. Well, usually what I do is I just hold this and I hold this and I just kind of eye it up. And when I get it close, then I tamp it on so it's on there nice and snug, just like that. And again, you want to try to get that as accurate and as true as you can onto the backing plate. Let's talk about speeds real quick. The Porter Cable 7424 XP it has a variable speed motor and you can change the speed simply by changing the dial. Now the dial is marked from 1 to 6 with 1 being the lowest setting and 6 being the highest setting. Now generally speaking you would use the 5 or 6 setting to remove swirls because when you're removing swirls you really need some power to really pull those swirls out of the paint. When you go to put wax on, you, got, you want to bump that speed down to around the three or four. You don't need the high speed just to spread out a coat of wax. So again, when you're removing swirls, you want to be on the five or six setting. Now when I go to pull the swirls out of here, I'm going to go ahead and start at the five setting. And if that doesn't seem to be enough power, then I can always bump it up to the six. But usually five, that's quite a bit of power. Again, this is a pretty powerful tool, but it's still safe with that free rotating spindle assembly. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to take a black felt marker and I'm going to put a mark right here on my backing plate. And the reason I'm doing this is so I can easily tell if my pad's rotating or if it's just vibrating. See, when you're removing swirls, you want the pad rotating. When the pad is rotating on the surface, that's when it's going to do the best job of removing swirls. And sometimes you might see that pad where it's just kind of vibrating, and if you see that, you want to stop and adjust your technique because it isn't really going to remove any swirls if it's not rotating. And this is just going to help you to tell easily in a visual way if the pad's rotating. Just take a black felt marker, and you really only need to make one mark. And that'll make it real easy to tell if that pad's rotating. Just like that. The Porter Cable 7424 XP, it comes with a stick handle. That's what we call this, it's a stick handle. Some, some tools come with a hoop handle, this is a stick handle. You can take this off and put it on either side to, to vary for if you're left handed or right hand. Or if you like, you can actually take the handle off and then you can just put your hand right there on top of the head. The only thing I want to caution you about using the handle is a lot of times when you're new to polishing, if, when you hold the handle, it's really easy to say push down harder on the handle. So you got to focus and try to make sure that when you're pushing down that you're not buffing crooked, that you're, you're holding it in such a way that you're putting the pressure down so the pad stays flat. You always want to buff with the pad flat to the surface. You don't want to buff on an edge, okay? So try to remember that when you're pushing on the handle that you got to do it in such a way that you keep the pad flat to the surface. Now, pay attention. This is the most important part of this video. I'm going to go over the techniques for correctly using the Porter Cable to remove swirls. There's not a lot of them, but they're very important. First, when you go to use this tool, you need to apply enough downward pressure to engage the abrasives so they'll remove the swirls, okay? And that's somewhere around 15 pounds. And that's, that sounds like a lot, but you gotta understand the tool weighs five pounds by itself. So probably right around 15 pounds of downward pressure. Next is your arm speed. Your arm speed is how fast you move the polisher over the surface. We call this the arm speed. Most people tend to hear that motor running real fast and then they match it with their arm speed and they get that polisher just a zinging across the surface and that isn't going to remove your swirls. You want to slow your arm speed down and I'm going to show you just how slow to move the polisher. So slow your arm speed down. And then the next thing is the speed. Too many people, because they're unsure of the tool, they'll have that speed setting too low. You need to be at the five or six setting. Then besides that, the rest are pretty simple. Things like overlap your passes by 50%. And again, I'll show you that when we start to buff out this section. And then you want to make anywhere from about four to six passes over the entire section before you stop and inspect. And again, we'll show you that 
as we start buffing out this section. So now we're ready to actually put some product on the face of our pad. And you can do this with either a circle pattern or an X pattern, whichever you like. And bef again, before you turn the polisher on, make sure that pad is in contact with the finish. We're ready to start polishing. Again, remember, always put the cord over your shoulder so you don't buff and drag that thing up and down on the paint, potentially marring or scratching it. Now, I'm gonna use the Wolfgang Total Swirl Remover 3.0. I'm gonna pop the lid here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make a little X pattern here across the face of the pad. Just like that. Okay. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna place this against the paint before I turn the machine on. And then as soon as I turn it on, I'm gonna quickly spread my product out over this whole area that I'm going to buff. And after I've got this part spread out, then I'm gonna slow down and start making overlapping passes. And I'm gonna go front to back and then side to side. And each time I start from here and go back and forth and cover that area one time, that's called a section pass. Now when I go back this way, and cover that section one time, that's a section pass. I'm gonna do that six times, so that'll be called six section passes. Then I'll turn the polisher off. After the pad stops spinning, we'll lift it off, we'll wipe it off, we'll inspect our results. And then looking at the surface at an angle, as far as I can tell, all the swirls have been removed. And th that was the goal, to remove the swirls by using the right combination of pad and chemical in one step. Now, the next step, we're gonna take these results and actually bring them up to a higher level, and that'll be with the Wolfgang Finishing Glaze 3.0 and a white CCS foam polishing pad. We're finished with the swirl removal step. So next, we're gonna take this pad off. I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna go to a white polishing pad. Now, this is a lot softer, a lot more gentle to the finish. And again, you just wanna take and center that up so it's true. Do as good as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want to get it close. That looks good. And we're gonna take and set our speed from a 5.0 setting down to the four, okay? So when you're removing swirls, you really need a lot of power, you know, because you're trying to take the swirls out of the paint. For this finishing step, you don't need all that power. So you're just gonna bump it down to the four setting. And we're gonna switch over to the Wolfgang Finishing Glaze 3.0. And again, I'm just gonna take, shake this up, and then I'm gonna put an X pattern across the face of the pad. Now, there's my X pattern, and real quickly, I'm gonna recap how to use the polisher. Before I turn this on, I'm gonna turn the pad over and put the pad against the paint, and then when I turn it on, I'm gonna quickly spread the product out over the area I'm gonna work, and then after I've got it spread out, that's when I'm gonna slow down and start making my overlapping passes front to back and then side to side. And here's a little tip. Remember, polishing paint is an art form. It's not a grinding process, okay? So when you get to your last few passes at the polishing step, you wanna bring your pressure up a little bit, okay? So bring your pressure up, make your last few passes, then turn the polisher off before you lift it off, and then wipe off the residue and inspect the results. That would look like this. Okay, I have the product completely spread out over the area I'm working. Now I'm gonna slow my arm speed down and start to polish this paint to a high gloss. I'll start here in the corner. I'm gonna go front to back. Then I'm gonna overlap my passes and go side to side. And I'm gonna repeat this until I, again, until I do about four to six section passes. And the last two sets of passes I do, I'm gonna bring my pressure up. You probably can see that that pad is rotating by the black mark there. As I refine this finish, a super high gloss. It has four 